How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a wonderful holiday season because it is winter and boy am I feeling jolly. So I know that you've been on the hunt lately for some really affordable fragrance gems that you can find at your local rack stores because some really expensive fragrances have been popping up for a really good price and you never really know what you're gonna find. It's almost like a treasure hunt at these rack stores. But today we're gonna be looking at 10 fragrances that are actually worth the money, especially the ones that you find for $15. These these are the Milestone Perfumes fragrances that you'll see. Generally, they smell really nice, but these ones are the best of the best. So if you see these out and you wanna smell them, go for it. But if they're locked up behind the glass, you can buy these without hesitation. So let's get into it. So all of these fragrances are going to be around the $15 mark. They may go up or down a little bit depending on which store you purchase them from. A lot of these I bought from TJ Maxx, some of them from Marshalls, but really you can find them at any of your local rack stores. All of these ones have really nice high pressurized atomizers. This first one is Milestone Perfumes Saffron Noir. So this one is a new fragrance that I haven't really tested a whole lot on skin. I've given it maybe two wearings, two proper wearings, but I gotta say it smells really, really nice for the price. You have a nice kind of thick oily juice in here. It's a little bit of a kind of dark color, but this is obviously a Byredo Black Saffron clone. So this definitely shares some of that sting that kind of bright leather with a little bit of raspberry saffron and sort of that powdery violet but this stuff smells extremely high quality and while you're not going to be sharing that same quality of something from the house of byredo because they are well known for their quality and just their incredible fragrance compositions but this is definitely a wonderful alternative and a wonderful take for under 20 dollars again this one is 15 and it's just a really, really interesting powdery kind of raspberry and violet with that saffron and a beautiful, beautiful leather. So this kind of reminds me a little bit of Tuscan leather with just a little bit more saffron. So it's got a little bit more of an edge to it, but it definitely does not smell like a $15 fragrance. It smells like maybe an 80 or a $90 fragrance. So if you like dark leather and saffron, this is gonna be your friend. This is Milestone's Saffron Noir. This next one is a funny bottle. At the number nine spot, we have Together With You Always. So they are not very creative with some of these names. They are very on the nose, no pun intended, but they're very similar to the original and the bottle is definitely a cheap kind of knockoff of that original bottle. Not the greatest fan. It looks a little bit gaudy to me, but the juice quality definitely smells good here. This is a twist on Giorgio Armani's Stronger With You Intensely. There's the Oud one, there's Frozen. It just kind of smells like a lot of of the Stronger With You lines just kind of combined together into one fragrance. So you definitely still have that creamy, nutty vanilla and amber with a little bit of that kind of bubblegum sweetness. So it's a little bit boozy with that hint of the classic lavender that you'd find in a lot of the Stronger With You fragrances. But for some reason, this one just kind of reminds me a little bit of that kind of spicy 1 million Paco Rabanne DNA with a little bit of that sweetness. And if you like that kind of vibe, then you're definitely gonna enjoy this one. Yeah, just a creamy, spicy, and really dark and kind of praline kind of nutty vibe with this one. It smells really, really good for the price. And that one is Together With You Always. At the number eight spot, we have a blatant clone like some of these other ones. I just can't get over this bottle. So when I first saw this bottle on the shelf, I immediately grabbed it because for a split second, in my brain, I thought this was the actual Mansura Red Tobacco, but it is not. This is Monarch's Red Tobacco Vanilla. So this one is definitely very dense in the opening, just like the original Mansara Red Tobacco, but I gotta say the dry down is particularly lovely here. You have a wonderful sugary vanilla, some tobacco, spices, and a blast of incense. So very incense heavy. And I also feel like the saffron in here and some of the other earthy notes just really come out, but the vanilla really shines here, especially with that kind of creamy, sweet, almost burnt sugar vibe, but at the same time, the saffron and the incense definitely kind of ramp it up and make it smell a little bit more masculine and definitely just really, really pleasing. 
There's definitely been some other fragrances that kind of remind me of this. So if you have the original red tobacco, or maybe you like the Perfumes de Marly Carlisle, this is definitely in that same kind of wheelhouse with that kind of spicy gourmand kind of approach to it. But this one is really a powerhouse. It's about an eight to 10 hour fragrance. And for $15, eight to 10 hours of longevity, I think that is definitely well worth your money. So that is why it's on this list. And that is Monarch's Red Tobacco Vanilla. So this next fragrance, I love to make fun of the bottle. I think it is one of the most ugly bottles, but if you can overlook the hideous bottle and look at the juice contained within, I think you'll be very happy. This one is ombre leather. So there's also the Toscano leather. They came out with King Fabulous, which is the effing fabulous clone. And they also have a cherry one. The, I think it's the Lost Cherry clone. So far, this has been my favorite along with the Toscano leather. I think that's what it was called. This one actually, believe it or not, gets regular wear in my rotation. So I'm wearing this probably maybe once every week or so, maybe one or two weeks. And I try to rotate through my collection quite a bit because I don't want these bottles here sitting and collecting dust. I like to familiarize myself with them and just kind of keep track of all the different ones that I have and not let them go to waste. But this one I think is definitely worth it and I love wearing it personally on my skin. It's got a beautiful sexy leather. It's got incense, amber, and patchouli. So this is basically Ombre Nomad meets Tom Ford Ombre Leather. So you have that very, very nice kind of high quality seductive smelling black black leather with a nice kind of incense and some of that amber. I just love that kind of masculine leather jacket smell, but I think they also ramp up some of the amber and the musk in this. So the dry down definitely makes it smell very aromatic and very open and kind of salty, like a salty leather. But I think if you love that ombre nomad and that ombre leather, I think this is a perfect blend between those. And despite the Tom Ford style bottle, this is definitely more close to the ombre nomad from Louis Vuitton. I feel like I also get a little bit of rose and raspberry. So I think that can definitely lean a little bit more unisex. And this one is an eight hour fragrance at least. So you get really good projection those first few hours, but this one is one of my favorites from this house. And that one is ombre leather. At the number six spot, we have a really interesting one. And I was quite shocked when I saw that these brands cloned the specific fragrance and house of fragrances. This one is just called Opera. This one is a clone of Suspiro Opera. Now, if you haven't smelled that fragrance, I highly recommend going out and smelling it if you have a really nice niche perfumery. Definitely go and sample this fragrance because the, not, not this one, but you know, the, the real one, <laughs> because that one is a beautiful, beautiful masterpiece. But I think this is one of the most faithful clones that I have smelled at least in a while. It has a beautiful minty spice and musk. And there's also a little bit of some white florals and some kind of leather in there. It's a little bit hard to explain because there's so many notes going on here and it really has a unique kind of combination and a unique dry down, especially when you kind of get it in the air. It just smells really, really interesting. But I think the best way that I would kind of describe it is it smells like a warm, fruity dryer sheet. So it's a little bit metallic, it's a little bit musky, and you can almost get that sort of warm dryer sheet where you have a little bit of the static and it just smells a little bit electric, a little bit effervescent, a little bit sparkly, but it smells absolutely wonderful with those kind of fruity spices and the musk just makes it smell really clean, a little bit soapy, and it's really just a masterpiece. And I think this one definitely follows that masterpiece very faithfully. And I think this one is one of the better smelling ones from these Middle Eastern kind of clones that you'd find at the rack store. It's about a seven hour fragrance, but I'm perfectly fine with that because of how amazing it smells. And that one is opera. So we made it halfway through the video, guys. If you like this video and you love fragrance related content, please consider subscribing and dropping a like down below because I work really hard on these videos and I love sharing them with you. I really, really appreciate it. Back to the video. Number five, we have Mouge Intimate. So this one is an Amouage interlude clone. And I gotta say it is pretty dang close, maybe 80% close. It's an intense incense with some myrrh, some peppery oud, and some green, a little bit herbaceous kind of facets in this one. Mouge Intimate is very smoky and slightly salty up top, but again, with a really spicy 
and just kind of green backbone to it. I gotta say, I love the incense and the smoke here because it really just smells dark. It's very powerful, especially for the winter, and I think it projects really, really heavy, especially for the first couple hours. While you have that bubble around you, you're going to be noticed. But in terms of longevity, it's not going to be as strong as the original one from Amouage. It is definitely a wonderful alternative and a wonderful sort of take on that DNA. It's a little bit different. I feel like they mix up some of the notes just a little bit, but it's still very dark and it's perfect for this kind of winter season. I still like the Midnight Oud from Ard Al Zafran. I think that one's a little bit better for the price. They're roughly around the same price, but if you see this one in the rack store, I think you can definitely pick it up, smell it, and if you like how it smells, try it on your skin and you can even take it home because half the time these are just sitting out. So if you don't want to wait on shipping for some of the Middle Eastern ones, you can definitely pick these up in your local rack stores. So that one is Mouj Intimate. So at the number four spot, we have actually the first Milestone Perfumes fragrance that I ended up picking up. It was about a year ago. This is Milestone's Velvet Collection Black Incenso. So this is a Dolce Gabbana Velvet Incenso clone. So very similar with the naming as with all of these, but definitely a very incense, benzoin and LMI heavy kind of fragrance. So it's very resinous, it's thick, it's a little bit pine-like and it's just very mysterious. I don't know why, but out of all of the Milestone fragrances, I think I pick this one up and smell it the most just because I'm really drawn to how mysterious and kind of dark this one smells. And I don't wear it all the time on my skin just because it's not the most amazing performer. I wanna say it's about a five to six hour fragrance, at least on my skin where it's real strong. And then, you know, it just kind of sits a little bit closer to the skin, but man, this stuff just smells better and better the more that you sniff it and you let it maturate. For some reason, I imagine a foggy forest with a traveler burning incense and kind of warding off evil. And so it's a little bit picturesque. It's just very resinous, it's rich, it's opulent, and it just smells like a beautiful forest with incense. And I really, really enjoy how this one smells. And that is the Velvet Collection Black Incenso. At the number three spot, we have Tax Coat. So this one's an Yves Saint Laurent tuxedo clone. And originally, I actually scored this one pretty low. I said it wasn't a great performer and I was really harsh on it. So that was in my initial review. And I soon realized after wearing it for a little bit and after receiving some feedback from the comments that I was most likely going nose blind. And that is the case with a lot of these kind of Middle Eastern fragrances, especially from these brands in particular. I don't really notice it in some of the Maison Alhambras or the Latafas, really just these ones. So I don't know if it has to do with the kind of cheaper chemicals that they're using or the kind of fragrance raw materials that they're using. But I kind of noticed that they give a little bit of olfactive fatigue and you can definitely go nose blind to them at least within the first kind of hour or two. So despite it kind of vanishing from your mindset, it still is definitely there and it's leaving an impression. So just a little forewarning. I think with this one sitting on my shelf for about a year maturating, it has definitely improved kind of like a fine wine. It's aged and it smelled absolutely amazing. And I think it performs much better now and it smells way better. This one shares that amber, patchouli and vanilla. And I gotta say the sweetness and the kind of beautiful musky patchouli chocolatey earthiness in the opening, it definitely comes off and it smells very close to Maison Alhambra's Kismet. Whew, it's all coming back. God, this one's good. Y'all, if you love Tuxedo, this is definitely very close. And I think as it matures and as it kind of sits on your shelf, it's gonna get better and better. And it's gonna smell a lot closer. So my guess is the bottle that I bought when I first purchased it was one of the early batches and it really didn't have time to settle down. So now that it's aged, it smells very close and I get around eight hours out of this one versus the four or five like I originally said. Really, really nice smelling stuff here. And that one is Tax Co. At the number two spot, we're looking at Velvet Collection's Ombre Sun. So this is a Dolce Gabbana Amber Sun kind of twist, a little bit of a spinoff on that one, but I haven't smelled the original one. When I smelled it at first, I thought it was very close to Grand Soir. So this one and Grand Soir definitely are a very amber heavy fragrance with a little bit of that vanillic kind of undertone. So I could definitely see why 
I might think that just looking at some of the notes online. But if you think they're similar, let me know in the comments. This definitely reminds me of the Grand Soir DNA with a little bit of that slightly boozy kind of sweetness with the gorgeous resins, vanilla, that amber, a little bit of that ambrette. And I think the amber wood in this one gives it a little bit of a salty, woody kind of backbone. So it smells very modern and it smells very sweet gourmand without smelling overly feminine and without just smelling overly synthetic. I think they do it really nice here. It smells kind of velvety, just like the name would suggest. And it's very warm and it has sort of a solar effect to it. So you feel warm, you feel kind of enveloped in it, and it just makes everybody around you kind of smell that and feel that way. Also a little trick, if you ever see these bottles out and it looks like they're missing a little bit of the juice, you can actually ask the cashiers to give you a discount and they'll discount it by 10%. That's the max that they can take out of it. But if it looks like your bottle's missing a little bit of juice or if it's like kind of dinged up, like this one has a little scratch on the side, if you find any little cosmetic imperfections, don't be afraid to talk to them and ask them to knock off the 10%. They're not gonna care. It's a huge corporation and you are gonna be happy because you saved a couple bucks. I just like saving any penny that I can. This one actually surprised me quite a bit and I got upwards of 10 to 11 hours on this one and it just smells amazing for the price. And that one is Ambre Sun. At the number one spot, we have one of my favorite releases from this entire collection. What am I talking about? Mouge Affection. So this one is an Amouage Reflection Man clone. So you have an amazing white kind of mature floral mixed with some clean linens and a velvety, sweet, smooth and warm kind of orris and sandalwood. So the orris and that sandalwood definitely give it a sweetness and it smells a little bit aquatic here too. I think this is a twist on that original Amouage DNA. It doesn't smell one to one. I do own that fragrance, but this one it's got a beautiful atomizer and I think it has a little bit of a honey-like kind of sweetness to it. I think they kind of mix around and revamp some of the materials and the oil ratios and just kind of change it up just a little bit. And personally, I get a little bit of a mix between Amouage Reflection. I also get a mix between Jean-Paul Gaultier La Mail, maybe Versace the Dreamer, or even a totally random fragrance that you may never have heard of. Kind of reminds me of Gaccio Blue by Duccio Pasolini. So that's an X straight de parfum. I don't want to get sidetracked, but I'll probably end up talking about this one in the future too. But again, just a little bit of a twist on that reflection and Jean-Paul Gaultier La Mail kind of DNA. So this one, I feel like it takes a slightly more feminine kind of approach to the original, but I still love it. And I think it's definitely unisex. And if you love that kind of mature, floral, sweet, lavender kind of fougier fragrance, I think you're gonna love this one. This one also has some of that neroli. So that could also attribute to that kind of honey-like white creamy floral kind of facet to it. But I feel like I also get a little bit of rose and maybe even some tobacco blossom. So this is a perfect springtime fragrance. I know I'm releasing this in winter, but this one's gonna be perfect for the kind of warmer weather and the first few hours when you spray this in the air and you have that beautiful scent bubble and sillage and trail around you, it's gonna be intoxicating. This is about an eight hour fragrance and for this price, it is a no brainer. One of the best blind grab fragrances and that's Mouge Affection. So there you go, 10 Milestone Perfumes fragrances that are going to be worth the money. If you've seen any of these fragrances and you pass on it, maybe pick them up, see what it's like. And if you have an extra 15, 20 bucks lying around, I think these are a perfect way to spend that and get something that smells really high quality for under that $20 mark. If you've smelled any of these fragrances or if you have any other recommendations that I should check out from this brand or any other brand, let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a safe and wonderful holidays. I've been Eli with Common Sense and until the next time, bye-bye. This freaking brick of a bottle landed an inch away from my big toe. That would have been so bad. <laughs>